Hello everyone, how are you today? It's Kei. So this is the 7th of January on Friday. So a happy Friday to everyone. And great to see you again. So uh, let's see what's happening in the market now. This is live. So I will explain the market by Ichimoku Kinko here real time. And also there was a NFP in the US, so AUD is sold and also um, looks like CAD is bought, but now it's going backwards. But, um, we will see charts, check charts, and see what happens after the NFP event. Right, so let me get ready quickly because I was checking charts and talking to other traders, so I have to clean the desktop, so let me see. Alright, yeah, good to see you, everyone. Thank you for joining. Alex, Kishore, and David, Gary, good to see you. And um, Robo, thank you for joining, good to see you too. And Suresh, TikTok, good to see you also, thank you for joining. Yeah, yeah, oh, let's see. Okay, so now this is good. All right, so let me turn, switch the window. Okay, and uh, before starting, as a quick disclaimer, as usual, this content is all based on my own experience and knowledge. And this is also only my opinion. So when you take trades, please do at your own risk. And since this is a live stream, if you can please follow the rules and guidelines on the live stream, that will be great. All right. Yeah, good to see you. I, I still to see many more joiners here now for joining. All right, Payson, Lam, and Dung, Brian, Andre FX, good to see you too. And Arara, and Muhammad, thank you for joining as well. Great to see you. All right, so um, let's see. Let me check some charts now. So I will switch the trading view. Oh, this layout, I think each screen is too small. So I will make it a uh, one screen. Okay, so uh, but before we start to check charts, let's check the currency strength chart now first, because there was a big event, NFP just earlier. So we want to know which currency is bought, which currency is sold as a result. So this is a strength chart as of now. Let me refresh. Okay, so the purple one is CAD. So after the NFP, we can clearly see that the CAD was bought. And also AUD was sold so heavily. And now it looks like it's kind of coming back. So first, let's check the CAD pairs and AUD pairs. And this is basically what I do every time I see chart after the big event. So um, let me check the CAD pairs first. CAD is bold, so CAD pairs should be uptrending or it, it is up bold right now. So let me check CAD pairs. So first, I will check the Euro CAD. It should be going down. Uh, so here is the daily chart and euro cad as a result it's not really going down euro is actually strong cad sorry euros weak cad is strong and both are in equilibrium right now and the market is within the kumo now it's range so simply this is range so i won't uh stick to this one and then let's see other cad pair usc cad all right, USCCAD also is in the range still. It's really squeezing, so not much moves here. And then uh, pound CAD. Pound CAD is also a bit ranging, kind of bullish now, but uh, still, I think the bullishness is not, not that strong right now. Not st not so stable. So I guess I will just um, you know avoid this one. And then uh, let's see other CAD pair AUD CAD. Okay, AUDCAD is downtrending. I mean, it's sold today. 
and uh, it's going down. But in the daily chart, this is still within the range. So I will look at the four hour chart. And in the four hour chart, I can see that this is downtrending. Um, Kumo down, Kijun Sen is flat, but Tenkan Sen is down. And the price below the Kijun Sen, Tenkan Sen, and Chikou Span below candles. So this is bearish. Um, and that's why I mark this one AUDCAD as bearish in the flower chart. And um, yeah, so after I see this bearishness in the flower chart, I would squeeze a chart and see if there was any support in the past at this level, 0.9071. So I will just draw the line like this, and I will squeeze a chart. And yeah, there are a couple of supports here I can find. Previous support levels here. And after the breakout, the market came back and there was a little bounce here. So we, we see we, there are three supports in the past. So it may reverse backwards from here. So that means I would have to wait for the breakout of that level, 0 0.9070, and then look for the sell chance. Otherwise, it may retrace back to Tenkan Sen or Kijun Sen. But uh, so in this case, uh, I will just uh, stay away for maybe three hours or so and then come back afterwards. But that might be kind of close to the market close. So um, yeah, if that's the case, uh, I won't. I may simply I will come back to chart tomorrow is what I do. So let's see, what else? CADJPY. Um, in a forward chart, it's ranging P wave. And in the daily chart, this is also uh, ranging. But this is a bit bullish now. I can see that there was a pin bar yesterday on the 6th of January. It was supported by the Tenkan Sen. And it looks like it's going up. Uh, the market is above the Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen, Kumo. Spun lava above the candles, so this is bullish. But uh, there was a previous resistance level over here at around uh, 91.62. So um, it may be resisted and reverse backwards. So yeah, this one I won't uh, really pay attention. Maybe I'll just come back chart tomorrow and see if we see if we have any trends in the daily time frame. And also CAD run, it's bullish because of the strong CAD, that's bullish now. But the market is heading towards the Kumo, so this is not trending right now. I mean, when I, when I see the market in between Kijun Sen and Kumo, most likely I stay away. So um, this one, I guess I won't uh, trade. Lower time frames are up trending, like one hour is up, but um, usually I prefer to follow daily chart or the forward chart. So, and this, since this is this from pair, it's uh, it, it has a, a wider spread and also uh, spiky in the lower time frames. So, in that sense, yeah, this is my low priority. If the market breaks the resistance 0.7273, then I might look for the buy, but uh, we will see. I will just put the line at the resistance and see if it breaks today or tomorrow. But these are the CAD pairs analysis after the NFP. Yep. Thank you for joining. Good to see you. I do see many more comments now. All right. Let's see. All right. Oh, Sarosh, welcome back. Thank you for joining. Good to see you again. All right, let's see. John Harris says, uh, "K on pound daughter, can we? Uh, we can almost confirm the sign cotton. We just need the Kumo rise." All right, let me check. Pound daughter in the daily chart. Yep, um, it just broke the Kumo upwards. Now, so to me, this is bullish. As long as market above the Tenkan Sen, it's bullish. So when you buy right now, uh, stop loss should be below the Tenkan Sen. And once the market breaks Tenkan Sen, you better exit. 
That's the short term uh, strategy. In the midterm, you can put the stop loss on the Kijun Sen or below Kijun Sen, and then just hold as long as market is above the Kijun Sen. But uh, yeah, there was a nice uh, Sanyaku Koten signal here after we see Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen, Gold Cross, and Chikou Span breakout and Kumo breakout. The market is now in bullish mode. So, yeah, um, so I would, in this case, to be safer, I would wait for the breakout of the resistance here at 1.3600 and then look for the buy chance. I don't wait for the Kumo twist because it may be, you know, uh, a bit, uh, you know uh, to the future. A uh, couple of days or a couple of weeks, it may take for the Kumo to twist. So in this case, instead of waiting for the Kumo twist, I will simply wait for the breakout of the resistance and then look for the buying edge. And target will be at the top of the resistance, which is 1.3837. So to me, this is too bullish. But once the market breaks the Tenkan Sen, then I have to hold. Yeah, let's see. Son says um, AUDJPY. So yeah, AUDJPY right now is retracing backwards in the daily time frame. Um, yeah, so to me, this is range. But in the short term, it's bearish. So let me see. In one hour chart, this is bearish. Yeah, the market is below the Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen Kumo, Chikou Span below candles, so it's bearish. But we have to wait for the market breaks the support, which is 82.63 area, and then look for the sell chance. I would do that. But since the daily chart is flat still, it may reverse backwards anytime soon. So in this case, I risk only 1% to trade. If I see trends on the daily chart or the forward chart, then I take 2% risk. But in this particular case, I can only see downtrend in the one hour chart. So I would prefer to take 1% risk for this trade after the break of the support. I think the best Best up here so today is the pound AUD. Pound AUD daily chart just broke the resistance of a um, of 1.8918. So it is breaking. It hasn't broken yet because we don't confirm the kind of close of uh, today. But uh, it is breaking bullish the resistance and also. Uh, Kumo is up, Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen both pointing upwards, and Chikou Span above the candles. So Chikou Span has been tracing the previous candles nicely. This is called Chikou Span uh, trace, the previous candles. And then uh, th this part, it may break. This can be breakout, and then market could go up continuously upwards. So um, I think uh, pound AUD is good. And also, if you see the forward chart, it is also uptrending. Kumo is up, Kijun Sen is up, and Tenkan Sen also up above the candles, and Chikou Span above the candles. So to me, the best, best pair so far is pound AUD today. Um, let's see. In one hour, it's above the Kumo. Uh, and also above the Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen. And you can see that the market has been supported by the Tenkan Sen so far. And also Kijun Sen. So I expect the market continuously goes up in this direction. So I think Pound AUD is good to look for the buy. It may be traced back to the Kijun Sen and bounce by the Kijun Sen, previous supports, resistance and goes up in this way too. That will also be a scenario on AUD. So if you want to buy, then you can put the stop loss below the Kijun Sen or below 1.8918 area. 
and then hold the buy. When the market retraces backwards and hit that level, then simply exit is a strategy. Yeah, so let's see what else we can find today. Um, all right, so Sarosh says, uh, Kason, would you enter pound JPY based on Kijun Sen flat in the daily chart cell? All right, let me see, pound JPY. Um, yeah, so pound JPY is now bullish, obviously, it's bullish, and it's heading towards the previous resistance level at 158.25. So uh, the Kumo is twisted and it's bullish. Kijun Sen flat, but Tenkan Sen is bullish now. And Chikou span above the candles. So uh, I would say, I would say, um, yeah, if if you buy right now, then I will exit when the market breaks the Tenkan Sen. But expect the market breaks resistance and continuously go up. Will be my strategy. Let me check the flower chart. All right, in the forward chart, this is a bit bearish. Um, this might become a bearish in the wave, so to be safer, I would hold. I would hold in this case. Before, it was consecutive bullish in the wave like this, but you can clearly see that exactly from this candlestick, now the market is turning bearish. So it may go down, so, but if you buy right now, then uh, I will put the stop loss below the Kijun Sen in the flower chart. So that will be the stop loss and expect the market goes up. But I won't take higher risk in this case because Kijun Sen flat, so I would take only 1%. And if I see the market continuously go down, then I will for sure exit when the market breaks the Kijun Sen in the flower chart. But uh, with my strategy, KTS, case trading strategy, I won't trade because it's range. You can also call this as a P wave. This is like the P wave and a squeezing. So um, you can also wait for the P wave break and then look for the buy chance. I think that's also good strategy. But um, just make sure that there is no big news afterwards today. So let me check the calendar. And yeah, after NFP, and there was a unemployment rate in Canada too. And it was positive. So that's why Canada, Canadian dollars was bought. But uh, after that, there is no big news today. So we can simply trade by the price action and Ichimoku and the technical anal analysis. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Tom says, US oil, please check. All right. Let's see. US oil, crude oil. Um, here is, so let me check the weekly first. Weekly chart is now turning up bullish. Let me take out this arrow because this is no more downtrending anymore. So, um, oh yeah, and this is expanding Y wave structure. So Y wave is a tricky pattern in the market. So this is bullish, but it may turn backwards anytime soon. Um, now this is bullish because the market is simply above the Kumo and Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen. Chikou Span broke the candles, so this is bullish. Um, so it may reach to the top here at um, 85.39 will be the target and um, but let's see let me check the daily time frame okay as per daily chart the market broke the Kumo signing a curtain signal and now it's bullish so um, yeah and also I can see that the market has has been uh, has broke this uh, reversal level previous support resistance level the market broke upwards so it may reverse back to that level 
78.76 and then continuously goes up in this direction. But if the market breaks that level and Tenkan Sen, then you better exit, is my analysis. Yeah, so that's the US oil. But I think in the long term, it's, this is too bullish. Weekly is in the Y wave, but this is too bullish. And in the monthly chart is also, uh, yeah, this is range. Monthly is range, but in the weekly is now in the Y wave bullish. And then in the daily chart, it's also turned to bullish after the Sanyak Kotlin signal. I think this is nice to buy. But once the market breaks the previous reversal level in Tenkan Sen, then I would exit on this one, is my analysis. But for myself, I won't buy oil because, uh, you know, considering what's happening in the world and also, um, yeah, still kind of unstable economy. So I don't think the market will go up shortly. It may range sometime more is my analysis. And also according to KTS, my strategy, I would have to wait for the Kumo up, Jun Sen up also, above the Kumo, and Tenkan Sen bullish, and then I look for the buy chance. So, in this case, I would prefer to wait for the Kijun Sen comes up above the Kumo, and then look for the buy chance. All right, yeah, good to see you. Thanks for joining everyone. Right, let's see. Johnny Harris says, I placed position on Euro CIS run based on a five minute chart from the scarcity gold cross and confirmed the one hour chart gained pips but was cancelled when I moved the stop loss. Why does that happen? Maybe the spread. I think Euro CIS run spread gets very wide suddenly sometimes. But the news, especially, it goes up to like 20 pips or maybe 15 pips of the spread. And most likely, that position was caught by the spread and it's gone. And that's another reason why I don't really, I don't really positive to trade Swiss from pairs. I do monitor. When I have a chance, I just enter. But uh, the spread is very wide sometimes and I don't actively trade. Uh, and same reason in New Zealand pairs. New Zealand pairs also spread gets very wide suddenly and also very spiky in the lower time frames, volatile. So I don't really touch usually. Yep, so let me check some other comments now. So, uh, all right, China says, please analyze Nifty chart. All right, Nifty chart is now bullish, but let me check what happened today. Or index. Okay, Nifty chart. Let me check weekly first. All right, weekly chart came above the Tenkan Sen, so it's bullish now. But uh, Kumo flat, Kijun Sen flat. And if you see Kumo, it's squeezing. Kumo is squeezing. So this is range. So uh, for the last three weeks, it's been bullish, but it may turn bearish anytime soon. Um, yeah, and let me check daily chart. In terms of the daily time frame, uh, there was a Sanyak Koten signal after the Tenkan Sen Kijun Sen cross, Chikospan break, and the Kumo breakout. And the market retested the previous reversal level of 17.656 area, and it looks like it's bouncing by that level and the span B, and it goes up in this direction. So if I were to buy, I would wait for the breakout of the previous uh, resistance level at 17,954, and then buy afterwards. And expect the market goes up to the next resistances on 18,205 and 18,611 level. Yeah, so simply wait for the breakout 
and then buy, I would do that. Let's see. In the forward chart, it's up. So we can follow the forward chart direction of Nifty. Because in the forward chart, the Kumo Senko Span A is up. Kijun Sen is up above the Kumo. Tenkan Sen is up. Market has been supported by the Tenkan Sen now. And Chikou Span bullish. So as long as forward chart goes up, I would follow it and just try the profit along the way. Yeah, but uh, basically what I say is universal on any pairs, any market. So you can apply on your day-to-day -day analysis and trace of these Ichimoku strategies. All right, thank you for joining everyone. Great to see you once again. Happy Friday to everyone. The first Friday of the year. I hope you have a great day today. Yeah, thank you for joining everyone. Good to see you, good to see you. I do see many comments now. But let me check some other comments. Um, let's see. Dennis says, uh, Hi K, if there was a bullish breakout trade at the start of the higher time frame at the forward chart candle and Kumo is up, do I wait for the forward chart candle to be completed before I look for a buy chance? Uh, no, you don't have to wait for the forward chart close. If you simply see Kumo up, Kijun Sen up, and Chikou Span above the candles, and then you can just look for the buy chance. Yeah, but uh, if the market is near the resistance, then you might want to have to wait for the close, just to make sure that the market breaks the resistance, and then afterwards look for the buy chance. But if not, I simply go down to the lower time frames and look for an entry edges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Real Slav says, uh, "Hi, K. Could you analyze pounds this run, please? All right, pounds this run." Let's see. Pounce's run daily chart also broke the Kumo. So we have many Sanku Koten signals today. So previously, Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen cross, Chikou Span break, and the Kumo breakout is happening now. So the market is heading towards the resistance of 1.2553 level. Um, yeah, and with that in mind, if you look at the flower chart, it's also bullish. Yeah, yeah, slightly broke the previous resistance level and continuously bullish now. Yeah, pan Swiss run is good. I will mark this one also. So we can look for the buying edge on this one. The market has been nicely supported by the Tenkan Sen a couple of times. So as long as market is above the Tenkan Sen, it's bullish. But if the market breaks Tenkan Sen, then you might want to exit when you're buying this pair. So you have to see patterns in the market. Sometimes the market has been supported by the Kijun Sen or Senko Span A or like this Tenkan Sen or Senko Span B. And depending on which lines the market has been supported, you just take the line and then once it breaks, that will be an exit timing also. So, yeah, but once again, Pounce is run, forward chart looks good. Let me check weekly. Okay, weekly is now into the Kumo, but this week has been long bullish candle. It broke the Kijun Sen. Um, yeah, so it could reach to 1.2553. Um, yeah, I think that's... Uh, that's a realistic, realistic approach to follow the forward chart direction. Right? Yeah, let's see. Early Styles says, I currently analyze about gold and AUD USD. All right, let's check gold. Um, okay, gold in the daily chart. This is still within the P wave on the weekly, 
and the market is on the Kijun Sen now. And this is very difficult to see which way it's going. There's no trends. Kumo flat, Kijun Sen flat, core span is too close to the previous candles. And market is today's like a doji candle. So this is the market to avoid taking trades. We can't see which way it's, go it's going. And according to the weekly time frame, as I said before, this is in the P wave, so the market may go down to the trend line, like this, and then bounce and goes up to the upper level of the P wave. But, um, yeah. I would prefer to wait for the P wave breakout and buy or sell. Yeah, otherwise I would just hold because it's there's no direction in this case. No direction. So I am a trend follower, so I only look for a trends in the market. If there are no trends, then simply I stay away is my style is my style. So when I see the market like this, simply I close the chart and walk away. Okay, Kush says, uh, Hi K, can you do more live trades, breaking down your thoughts process in entering my smaller time frames uh, using entry edges, please? Uh, this is the part I found very difficult. Uh, yes, if I found uh, nice entry edges in the future, then I will do another live trace on the live stream. But you can refer to my previous live trace and see how I enter the trace and exit also. But I will continuously doing it. On future lives so basically when I see the lower time frames like five mainly I focus on the price action so this was after NFP so the market is kind of uh, you know a bit uh, difficult to read but uh, after the NFP what I find in five is the bullish in the wave right now the market is on the bullish in the wave so I expect the market goes up and breaks the resistance in 5 in this case. However, if the market breaks the support, then it doesn't become N wave anymore. But it, this is called a Y wave structure. And then I walk away. So let's say when I enter buy here, then I usually put the stop loss below the previous low. So this one is too tight, so most likely I put the stop loss here. But um, if the market breaks the first support, then I, I consider to exit. Because it's no more bullish in the wave. When I buy, I expect the market goes up towards my direction. And what that means is that the market goes up on the bullish in the wave. If not, then I look for an exit timing is my mindset and I do this in the 5 or 15 minute time frames usually I take 5 minute chart for entry edges but sometimes I take 15 but the concept is the same basically so technically I can enter anytime as long as it's trending I can enter anytime I can buy if it's bullish but the most important part is where to exit? Exit should be with a very small loss. And then you should be fine. Never learn the big losses. Never ever. Because I used to do it and uh, I lost so much money. And psychologically, it wasn't unhealthy. I was exiting, exiting trade uh, you know, in my dream when I was sleeping, when I was learning loss. So it was very unhealthy. So uh, make sure to have very small loss every time you trade and then cut the position as soon as the market goes backwards against your direction. So that if you if you make profit in the future, big profit profit can cover the previous small losses. 
Um, that's the risk management mindset of mine. And that's why I prefer to have very tight stop loss, but wide profit. But uh, yeah, I will continue to show some of the real trades when there is a big, there is a good setup in the market in in this uh, YouTube channel. All right, John Harris says, okay, based on a one hour trend, how would you, um, how would you, let's see, go about it, trading and taking profits? So basically, I trial the profits. Once I set the break even, then simply I trail profits by one hour. And when it's top trending one hour, simply I exit and take profits. And if I follow one hour chart, then I never pay attention to daily or hour charts. I only follow one hour chart and trail the profits. Oh, learning about cryptos are going well, actually. I have been back testing some of the cryptos with my strategy. I'm kind of fine tuning my strategies and trading cryptos. So uh, I'm still back testing by the tester, but um, I'm still looking for a good result in the back testing. But I have to study about the fundamentals and what's happening behind what's happening in the cryptos. So it's, uh, it's a big project of mine. But uh, yeah, it's going well. I just take trades in Forex for now, but uh, I'm studying the cryptos and also um, the stocks and indices. Yeah, let's see. Have you ever been in a trade where you reversed your position? I did that when pound USD when you confirm sank Koten in uh, the other day when US market are tanked. Um, I don't really do that. Like um, if I buy, then I simply exit, and I never hold the position towards you know another direction. I I don't really do that. Yeah, I just exit with a very small loss and then uh, look for to re-enter the market when the market continuously goes towards my direction. Yeah, that's usually uh, what I do. Chris says, um, okay, uh, why, uh, so when you take the profit on the position at 2R, uh, or do you trail profit loss? Uh, do you trail the stop loss? Yes, I trail the stop loss. Yes. I don't set the TP usually. Simply, I trail the stop loss. As long as it goes, I trail the profits along the way. Yeah, I used to take profit. Uh, I used to set the TP, but uh, sometimes the market doesn't touch TP. Sometimes it touches and just goes, you know, higher and higher. So that's why I decided not to take the PP, but instead try the profit along the way. So um, yeah, let's say. This is uptrending and higher time frames. Assuming that this is uptrending higher time frames, and I enter the trading five minute chart, let's say. So let me demonstrate how I think about a profit and loss. So in five minute chart, if I buy, let's say if I buy here, then I put the stop loss below the previous low, which is here. This is going to be my stop loss. And when I buy, I expect the market goes up towards my direction. That means not only that it goes up on I wave, 
but I expect the market goes up on the end wave, bullish. Because end wave is when you can confirm the market is going towards your direction uptrend. If you don't see end wave yet, then it's not uptrend yet, right? Because end wave is actually the confirmation for the uptrend. Because it broke the resistance, that means the buyers are stronger than sellers in the market in the five minute chart. So if I buy right now and I put the stop loss below the previous low, and if the market goes bearish, if the market goes against my direction from here, then I will exit at some point. And I will make sure to exit when the market goes bearish on the reverse end wave. That will be one of the situations I exit. Because when I start to see end wave bearish from here in 5, that means the market is going against my direction. Because I was expecting the market goes up on the end wave bullish. But it doesn't happen. The market goes bearish in the wave, and I should exit there. So before the price hit the stop loss, I exit in this condition. So that's one of the cases. And then the other case might be if I buy right now, then put the stop loss below the previous low. And let's say the market goes up on the I wave like this. Let's say the market goes up on the I wave, and then it goes down again. Like this in this case I don't exit yet because this is not yet reverse end wave right it was just simply I wave and I wave but if I start to see reverse end wave let's say from here it goes down like this then I would exit because this confirms me that the market is now bearish than bullish on the on the reverse end wave confirmation so before, even before the price hit the stop loss, I would exit here. You know, I'm just giving you uh, examples of how I see charts after the entry. So that's another case when I exit. And also, so when I move the stop loss is when the market goes towards my direction. So let's say the market goes up this way, I wave, and reverse backwards and goes up on the end wave, bullish. This is when I move the stop loss to the break even. I will move the stop loss slightly above the position. This will be maybe two pips or three pips in range because I have to cover the spread at the time of entry. So I will take profit of a two pips or three pips above. I put the stop loss so that the market goes, when the market goes backwards, I earn two pips or three pips. For the spread and this is the break-even line but when the market goes up on the bullish anyway towards my direction after the entry then i move the stop loss to break even it's reasonable to place the stop loss to break even at this timing and then simply i leave chart for hours after this because i don't lose after this so this is one of the situation and also let's say when i buy I put the stop loss here. So this is like the uh, you know like a you know brain training, like a scenario training. So let's say I buy, market goes up on the I wave, and then let's see the market goes bearish and reverse backwards to the position. Let's say 100% retracement happens. In this case, I don't exit yet um, because the market is not yet bullish or bearish in the wave counting from here the market could still go up this way or it may reverse backwards this way but we can't tell which way it's going when i see this so i don't exit i just simply monitor the chart maybe uh, every five minutes to 15 minutes by mobile or pc i monitor the chart and see which way it goes and if the market goes reverse end wave, then I exit by PC or mobile. If the market goes up on my direction, which is break out of this resistance. If the market breaks this resistance and goes up, and then I move the stop loss to break even. Because now we confirm that this is bullish end wave afterwards. 
So um, these will be the scenarios when I when I move the stop loss or when I exit um, that that trace. But uh, these are just you know a um, few examples. Of course, there are many many other scenarios, but um, I just wanted to show you my mindset of exit or break even. So let's say the market goes up towards my direction. So I put the buy. Oh, maybe I I think it's better to do the lines. I put the buy here. Put the stop loss here. Let me just delete this one. And the market goes up towards my direction. Towards my direction like this. Then I move the stop loss to break even like this. And then let's say the market goes up again like this on the bullish in the wave. Then I tr start to trail the profits like this. I start to trail the profits either here or here and move the stop loss. Maybe initially I will just move it to here just to secure some pips as it goes up. And then after I see the next end wave bullish, then I move the stop loss to the second previous low like this. So then I continue to fix the profits along the way. So that when the market reverses backwards, I don't lose, but I secure the profits and exit at these timings. And I do this on two trades, two positions. This is only one trade, one position example, but I do this on two time frames, two positions. And so, but uh, let's say, so this is five minute chart, and let's say in one hour, Let's say I follow the one hour chart and Kijun Sen is up, Kumo is up in one hour. But let's say Kijun Sen goes flat and Kumo goes flat. In that case, the market should be ranging like this. It should be ranging or retracing backwards like this. And so when I see this, this is when I look for an exit timing. Before the price hit the top loss, I look for and take profit here. You see? So originally, stop loss, my stop loss was here. But I, as, as the market goes up towards my direction, I move the stop loss and try the profits. And I secure positions, secure profits without losing. I secure pro profits gradually. And when the market reverses, simply I look for an exit timing. And this is why I say that, uh, you know, I only eat the body part of the fish. I don't eat the tail and head of the fish, but I only eat the body part because position to the stop loss, let's say this is the tail of the fish. And the, the top here, let's say um, the market range maybe here on the top, this would be the head part. So if I draw the fish like this, then um, you know, this is a head. This will be the head of the fish, and this is the tail, tail of the fish, and I only eat the body part. So this is the body part for juices, and I just take, I mean here, in this case, I just take this body part. And this is the most secure way to run profits and also to become a non-losing trader. And I do this every time I take trades. I never trade intuitively, or I never follow my gut feeling, but I only trade by the fact. So, no expectations, no predictions, I just follow the market directions. When it goes this way, then I trail. When it goes that way, then I look for an exit timing. So, that's basically my concept of this. Of these trades and I do this by Ichimoku Kinko Hyo in higher time frames and in the lower time frames for entry edges by 5 or 15 minute time frames I do this by price action and some other tools like Bollinger Bands or Stochastics I use I use also Fibonacci Fibonacci levels and uh, I, I basically do this um, yeah so this is my exit timing for the with the profit, but uh, coming back to 
the exit with a loss so my stop loss is here after i enter the buy if the market goes back to against my direction then i will simply exit no matter how strong the uptrend seems to be in higher time frames when the market goes backwards towards my direction or against my direction then i will make sure to exit and this is only like 7 pips or 10 pips of loss i do and after let's say the market goes up again then i will look for to re-enter the market to buy simply speaking and then put the stop loss here and hopefully try out the profit along the way if it goes backwards then i will simply exit again like this so um you know trading is all about the probabilities but i only trade when the chance is not 50 50. i never take 50 50 chance i only take 60 to 40 or 70 to 30 and sometimes the market goes backwards against me and then i will just exit but that will be maybe 40 percent or 30 percent of chance and when i do this every time i trade every time i execute my trades then overall it becomes profitable and after i found this concept i strictly follow my own strategy called kts by ichimoku and i have been profitable for the last eight years so far so um yeah hopefully you get this concept with my youtube channel and hopefully you become a non-losing trader as it states here is the topic for this youtube channel Yeah, okay, so uh, yeah, let me see. Let me quickly check some other comment now. But uh, yeah, this is very important, very important uh, concept to grasp. So, you know, um, there are millions of strategies, millions of indicators, and millions of weights analyzed charts. But uh, please remember that we are not here to be a professional indicator um like a how to say professional indicator um user right uh, we are here to make profits that's it um no matter how well you know about ichimoku no matter how well you know about the candlestick patterns if you can't make profit then that's not really uh the topic that's not really the point so, and that's why I continue to share my analysis on YouTube in live or video. And uh, hopefully I help you to see charts more clear way and entry and exit more clear way so that uh, you can be confident on your trace. All right, Saraj so says, um, Jason, would you enter on wide stop loss like 100 pips based on the daily chart if it's 1% of your trading account? I never take 100 pips of stop loss. I never do. Yeah, because the reason is because if you take 100 pips of stop loss, then it takes time for the market to go down 100 pips. It may take hours or days, maybe. And, but you have to cut the loss soon because you can't, you know, you can't, uh, you know, execute other trades when you are in the losing positions. So it's not time efficient, and I don't. That's why I don't take hundred pips of up loss like this. Okay, so um, I guess I will end the live for now. So uh, hopefully you learn something new. From this live stream if you do then please press the like button and please subscribe and click the bell button so that you get notified as i do these live streams or videos on my youtube channel continuously so uh i hope you have a great rest of a friday and great weekend and i will see you on the next one so until then please stay healthy 
stay safe and stay gold. All right, bye for now, everyone. Antane, thank you.